Uh, leave it to a man called the Happy Face Killer to say that decades in prison has cured him and that he's ready to join the rest of us out on the streets. Yeah, the Happy Face Killer has, um, he's admitted to upward of 185 murders all over the place, multiple states, even though the prosecutors have only been able to prove eight. Um, his real name is Keith Jesperson, but he got his nickname from all the taunting letters that he sent to the media and to the authorities, each of them signed with a smiley face. Uh, Keith Jesperson is writing different letters now, and I have just received my third. Letter number one kind of outlined the typical day he has in his prison and why he thinks it's like a country club. Uh, letter number two, that had a markedly different tone, kind of shut me down, refusing an interview, and more or less told me to buzz off. Uh, but letter number three is a bit of a mix. It's got some kind of bizarre asks in there and then some scary threats. Uh, not to me, though. Uh, he starts out by, by talking about another 25 to life conviction that's uh, coming his way from Florida in just a matter of days, he says. And then he writes this next part, which I thought was really crazy. Um, he says, I feel if I were let go, I'd never commit another crime. Freedom seems so special to me. Over the years, I've talked to several, I'm assuming inmates, uh, who would be getting out after 30 years or so. Most are angry and want some kind of payback, only to leave prison and put it all behind them. Time behind bars has cured me. I am no longer that person that put me in here. <laughs> Nevertheless, he does acknowledge he is not going to be getting out ever, 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 never. And that his daughter, a prolific TV producer named Melissa Moore, is going to make sure that he is not forgotten. He says that the book his daughter wrote about him is being turned into a TV show and that he is going to be played by Dennis Quaid. I don't know if Dennis Quaid has agreed to it yet, but um, that has made the happy face killer quite happy. He likes Dennis Quaid. He is insistent, however, that his daughter is not telling the real story in her book. And that's when the letter starts kind of going dark. Uh, he says that his daughter's book is filled with lies, and he makes some not-so-subtle threats against her. This is what he writes about his daughter and, uh, and her family. Quote, You know, they live just maybe 60 to 70 miles from me and will not come visit. She is scared to visit, fearful I'll get angry in the visit and hurt her. Some killers in here have told me to invite her in and dot, dot, dot. That's where his thoughts just trail off. But then he picks up again and says, if they had a daughter like her doing her BS, they would take care of it at visiting. Yee. So he signs his letter to me, Keith. Uh, no happy face. I am joined now by an investigative journalist and a writer who knows a lot about this guy. M. William Phelps has recorded more than 100 hours of conversations with Keith Jesperson, and he is the host of the podcast Crossing the Line with M. William Phelps. Um, it's great to have you with me. Thank you so much for joining. What's your read on, on all of it? Like letter one, talking about the country club. Letter two, nasty to me saying, buzz off. And then letter three, I'd, I'd turn my daughter, you know, loose with the inmates. Well, thanks for having me, Ashley. Um, call me Matthew. Um, look, this is typical Jesperson. Uh, it, I interviewed him for 10 years. And over that time, he wrote me 9,000 pages of letters. I have hundreds of pages of letters I haven't even opened yet because it's just it's just psycho babble. It you know it's the psychopath and his grandiose thinking. That's what they do, right? They have a need for stimulation, and once they're locked up, that need for stimulation just increases. And I read the letter this afternoon, and I I studied it a little bit. The latest one you got, and he's gloating in that letter. He's playing mind games. He, he, he likes to think people will listen to him. And he once told me this. He said, if, if you're a serial killer, people hang on every single word, right? They listen to you mm. no matter what you say. Um, so I would just say you know he's what? playing the cat and mouse <laughs> game with you. 
Matthew, you, you hit the nail on the head because I do. I am so fascinated by people who are so far outside the flock. And so one of the calls that you had, a Skype call with him, he described in gruesome detail what uh, he did to one of his victims. And I hung on every word just because I can't imagine a human being doing this to another human being. I, I want to play that and then ask you about sure. it on the other side. Have a listen. She was dead when I moved, when I got her up to my marker 198, where I tied her by the ankles underneath my trailer, and I drove out onto the freeway and drove for about 12 miles with her face down on the pavement. And uh, by the time the next cluster of vehicles caught up to me, I pulled over the side of the road, parked, got out with my side cutter pliers, cut the rope that was holding on to the truck, dragged what was left of her into the shoulder and left her there. Matthew, did the evidence back that up? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, what's interesting about that is, is how he delivers that, right? He delivers that as if he's talking about a baseball game that he had just come from watching. There's, there's absolutely no empathy. There's no sympathy. There's no, it's, it's very much, you know, this is what I did. And you can see him. He kind of gets closer to the screen at some points because he really wants you to hear this. Um, and and it, it's all part of his uh, psychopathy. It's all part of um, who he is inside. This is who he is, you know? He speaks about the most horrific details like he did just there uh, as if it's soothing to him. Right. It's it's easy for him to talk about it. This is funny to him. Um, he gets a rush from it. You know, psychopaths, they need to get a rush. And when they're locked up. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, how do they get that rush? Well, they get it by sending you letters. Uh, incidentally, you will never see a happy face uh, emoji on a letter to you because he'll get put in a hole for that. And all communication will be stopped if he doodles a happy face on anything on anything i am gonna call you back um because i'm again i am fascinated by those who are they just drift so far from the rest of us inside the flock of humanity and so uh, with your insight this has been a great conversation and i don't want it to end um matthew phelps thank you so much for being on tonight really appreciate it look forward to our next conversation thanks ashley thank you for watching Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.